In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know and what to expect when flying into the Punta Cana airport. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Trace Noches brings you real honest, to the point information and travel tips about the destinations that we go to. And your support means everything, so please like and subscribe and keep following us. We were traveling from the United States into the Dominican Republic and did not need proof of vaccination or a COVID test. We did need a passport and we had to fill out an online form, which I will link in the description. Usually your airline is going to guide you in all of the travel requirements, but always do your research because it can be different um, depending on the destinations that you are coming from. So first, when you arrive, one thing that might be different is that you actually deplane outside. And once you are deplane, they're gonna put you onto a bus and take you directly over to immigrations. First stop is immigrations and you can expect to wait in some long lines here so make sure everyone goes to the bathroom that you have snacks prepared for the kids. Now we got lucky that day because we arrived before noon on a Sunday which we are finding is a great time to travel no matter where we go because there's less lines. It was around 15 to 30 minutes um, but there's no e-gates here to speed it up. Now you could uh, put yourself closer on the plane, so don't put yourself in the back of the plane. That's one way to help. Also, if you're a Dominican citizen, they have a separate line. So even if you live in the US, if you were born in the Dominican, you can go through this line. So right after immigration is the duty-free area. Everyone has to go through this area. And we actually did buy a full bottle of liquor while we were here because they were not gonna be providing one in the room. And we always like to have one just in case. So definitely do your research, ask if they're gonna have one. Again, it's nice just to have it in your room if you wanna have a drink and this is the perfect place to buy it. And anything that you buy in the duty-free area, you do have to show your passport for and they will check it again when you go through customs. Now, after the duty-free is where you are going to pick up your luggage if you checked in a bag. Now, if you follow my channel, you know I'm really big on not checking bags in. Even if you're traveling for five days or seven days, I try to bring everything in a carry-on because sometimes you can wait for that luggage for a very long time. So that's just one tip here that I would give you as well if you can put everything in a check-in. If not, this is where you're going to go and wait for your bags before moving on to customs. There's also an area where you can exchange dollars into Dominican pesos. And coming from the United States, we never really need to do this. We always just tip in the US dollar and they are fine with that. Um, but there is an area to do that if you feel like you want to exchange money. <laughs> I always love the way that they welcome you into the Dominican Republic. You really feel like you are ready and going on vacation. So we are still making our way to customs though. So let's keep going through the airport. I'm going to show you some other things um, that you can find. So if you wanted to stop and get a drink, of course, they have a full bar right here. You can get cerveza. I definitely recommend drinking that Presidente beer. I very rarely drink beer. In fact, I only drink beer when I'm in the Dominican Republic and it's Presidente because it is so good. Now, one question I get a lot is about sunscreen because since I pack a carry-on, people always ask me, well, then how do you bring sunscreen? Well, usually I'm going to take it in a trial size, so a small size that will pass through in my carry-on. Um, yes, it's going to cost a little bit more, but if you wanted to wait until you arrive here, as you can see, most airports, like here in the Punta Cana, they have like a little market. So they'll have snacks and drinks and waters, whatever you need, but they also have sunscreen. And so the sunscreen, the bottles of sunscreen were about $20. At the resort, they're probably going to be around 30, but again, to avoid the headache of having to check a bag in just for your sunscreen is so worth it because you're gonna save so much time and you are gonna be able to get to your destination and your resort and vacation so much more quickly. So finally, we now have made it to customs. And again, we got really lucky. There were not really a line at all. We were just navigating the maze to get through to the exit. 
This is a great time to talk about the VIP service that they offer where you do not have to wait in any lines at all. We actually tried to sign up for it, but it was completely booked. So it's a very popular service, even though it's a little expensive. So it's $100 per person for when you arrive, which I think is totally worth it because you also get access to their lounge and it's a little bit less if you have more people and I think two ages two to seven it's only like twenty dollars each but when you depart it's two hundred dollars a person but again no security lines nothing and you get access to the really nice VIP lounge but again it was fully booked so if it's something that you want to do probably have to do it months in advance and I will put the link in the description below through customs and now it's time to get to your resort or to your destination so the next area is where you are going to find your transportation um, or maybe you are going to rent a car now, I don't have any experience renting a car in the Dominican Republic so I can't really tell you to do it or not to do it I personally if you follow me you know that I always go with the safest route especially when it comes to transportation so I stay away from taxis because I know you can get taken advantage of. Um, and I also stay away from shared transportation, really just because it takes so much longer. So I always opt for the private transportation that I arrange ahead of time. So the biggest tip I can give in this area is stay away from any sales pitches and timeshare pitches. We didn't get any while we were walking through here, but just stay away from them and always arrange transportation ahead of time. And we did so through Diamond Transfers and they were great. So I'm gonna do an entire separate video about this in case you need to look for your own um, transportation, but I will also link in the description if you wanna book with them. So now you're outside and this is the area where you are going to find that arranged transportation and they will meet you here off to the side. You're going to see they will have signs with your name on it. And again, just make sure you always confirm that your information matches their information so that you know you are with the right company. And as you can see, they were very easy to find. They have my name, they're there waiting for me. And then from there, they're gonna take us over to the end where the vehicle is waiting, which we will get to. Now, if you are waiting for other people to arrive, so you guys have private transfer together, but they're coming in from another um, on another airplane, there are some areas I'm gonna show you at the end where you could sit and eat and wait, which um, we've done on several occasions when we had to meet family members. So there are areas like that just here at the end. Another great advantage of the private transfer is they take your luggage and they guide you all the way to where you're going. And here at the end is the spot where is a great meetup point if you are waiting for you know, some other family members or friends to meet you. And then there was Lenny, our driver, waiting for us. It was so easy. They poured us a glass of Presidente, got into our vehicle and started making our way to the resort. So that's everything you need to know about arriving to the Punta Cana airport. So now let's talk about departing from the airport. Let's start with the biggest question we get in regards to departures, and that is how many hours in advance before your flight should you get to the airport? Honestly, there isn't really just one answer to this question. It really depends on if you are checking bags, if you are traveling during peak hours, during the weekend. So there are a lot of factors involved in this. In general, the transportation company is going to recommend around two and a half to three hours before your scheduled flight. And it is always better to be safe than sorry. Now we usually opt for around two hours before the flight because we never check in our bags um, because we figure even if it takes us an hour and a half to get through security, which has never happened to us, we would still have plenty of time to catch our flight. Now this last time we were really bummed that the VIP service was booked because we wanted to stay at the resort a little bit longer because if you have that VIP service, you could even get there an hour and a half in advance because they're going to bring you through that line and then you can just sit in the lounge for an hour and then catch your flight. And we were departing on a Wednesday afternoon and our flight did get delayed, so it got pushed back to a 5 p.m. departure. We arrived at the airport at 2.30. 
We used diamond transfers again to get us to the airport and we got really lucky because they were able to accommodate a later pickup time and we found out that our flight was delayed. And we got to the airport with no issues, no traffic or anything like that, but sometimes that can be a little bit of a factor as well. And when you do arrive, they do have people at the airport that will sometimes come over to the car and help gathering your bags and show you the way to go, which is not a service that you have to accept, but we gladly took it. They're hoping to get a tip um, just to help them out, even though we kind of knew where to go, but it was nice to have a quick guide around the corner. Once again, we got really lucky with the security lines. I think it only took us like maybe 15 or 20 minutes to get through the security lines and going through security was a breeze as well. You take off your shoes, you take out your electronics. Now my bag was flagged. I forgot to take out my liquids, which I know to do in Cancun, but I forgot to do it here. So the one bag was flagged and she went through some of my liquids. I think my perfume was what set it off, even though it was the correct amount, but then everything was fine and we were on our way. Then after the security line, one more line, it's the immigration line, which again, we got lucky wasn't too, too long. Once you're through that, then you can proceed to wait for your flight to depart. And then similar to when you arrive and you depart, there is also a duty-free lounge. The Punta Cana Airport has two private lounges, the VIP lounge, which was fully booked, and then they have a walk-in private lounge, which you can pay to enter. And so that's what we decided to do since our flight was going to be delayed so long. Here I'm trying to figure out where it is. Um, she actually sent us to the other side. I think she thought we were looking for the VIP lounge when in fact the lounge is right here to the left. You'll see all those um, glass windows. We didn't even take footage of it, we realized, because it was just very overwhelming. It was overcrowded. Um, they didn't have plugs. So I'm including some pictures from distantpoints.com and I will include their article in the description below where they give the same review that we did. I definitely do not think it's worth it in my opinion, unless you have a priority pass or something where you've already paid and you just want to get a couple drinks. The Punta Cana Airport actually has a great website as well, so I will link that in the description, um, including a list of all of the food options, which they don't have a ton, but they have definitely enough if you wanted to plan ahead. And of course, they have some shopping options as well if you want to get souvenirs, um, but they do not have a ton of plugs. So try to get those devices charged ahead of time. Um, they do have a cute little play area too for some of the younger kids. And it is an open air. I mean, they do have air conditioning, but just make sure you dress comfortably. And just like when you arrive, when you depart, you have to get onto a bus and then you board the plane outside. <laughs> And then sadly, it's time to leave the beautiful Dominican Republic. So we hope you found this video of the Punta Cana Airport helpful, and we do answer all comments and questions. So if you have anything to add from your experiences or any questions at all, drop them in the comments below. And keep following us at Three Days and Tres Noches, while we keep bringing you those honest reviews, those to the point travel tips and information about the destinations that we go to.